It's a rainy day when a main our protagonist meets Mahiru, the popular girl in class, sitting all alone in a children's park swing. A main goes over to her, and mind you, this was the first time it talked to her. He squats wrong, and she tells him not to worry, and that she's there by choice. But a main tells her that anyone would worry by the way she was. A main lends her the umbrella he had and tells her that she doesn't have to return it as he runs off into the rain. The next day at Seijo High School, we find a main at school sneezing after having been drenched by the rain the day before. Dot, his friend, asks him why he's sneezing so much, to which he replies with saying that he had got caught in the rain the day before. But his friend notices that he had an umbrella. He asks that to which he says that he had given his umbrella to a lost girl. The lost girl being Mahiru Sina. She's the most popular girl in class and goes by the nickname Angel. She's an all-rounder and on top of that she's kind and modest, making her extremely popular among all the boys. A main explains that pretty much any guy in his class would be down to date Mahiru, but he did not share the same wish. After school, he is about to leave for home as he is down with fever. When we find Mahiru standing nearby his apartment with the umbrella, he insists that she didn't have to give the umbrella when she notices that he has fever. She tells him that she can't leave him when he's down with a fever and insists to let her take care of him. A main reveals that him living next to Mahiru's apartment has always been something he wouldn't want anyone else to know as we see that Shaina's Mahiru apartment is the one right next to his one. A main wakes up two hours later to Mahiru staring at him. She asks him whether he would like to have some rice porridge she made and asks him to take his measurement, which he immediately does, and to which Mahiru starts blushing and looking away. Mahiru gives him the porridge and Amain finds it really good and is impressed by how well she can cook. She tells him that he better learn to clean his room, to which he agrees as well. He then questions her as to why she was all alone in the rain, asking whether she had a fight with her boyfriend, to which she instantly replies that she doesn't have one and is actually quite offended by the fact he assumes so. She tells him that she was just cooling her head. He then goes on to say that he won't bother her anymore after today and won't hang out with her, with no reason as he shows that he's not a pick-me type of guy. The next day, he notices her at school and walks past telling his friend that she's way past their league. At home, it's late we find a main helping himself to a jelly drink as his dinner. Mahiru sees this was not having it and proceeds to give a man dinner every night after as she becomes very mommy, I mean mom-like. Mahiru is in the grocery store when a main runs onto her. He sees that she's very cost-effective when it comes to her groceries as she is on an allowance from her parents. A main helps her carry the bags like the gentleman he is and goes earlier as he thinks that Mahiru wouldn't want anyone to get the wrong idea. Later, when Mahiru goes to see why Amain hadn't brought the lunch container like he usually did when he finds him at the door all messy, he reveals that he was cleaning the house and that's when Mahiru decides that she will help. They both clean the house all day when Mahiru slips and falls on Amain's lap. She tells him that that is what happens when he doesn't clean and in her opinion, rookie mistake, but okay. They order dinner and Amain finds out that Mahiru's never had delivery pizza and that she had always stuck to household cooking as they had a housekeeper. As Mahiru is about to leave, he asks her what she gains from giving a main dinner every night to which she says her own satisfaction as she doesn't feel comfortable about his diet and helping him out satisfies her. The next day, a main finds Mahiru sitting all alone in the apric again, this time when he asks her what's wrong, although hesitant to say at first. She tells him that she was trying to save a cat who was stuck on top of a tree. A main suddenly leaves telling her to wait there and comes back with some ice and a cold compress. He asks her to remove her tights, uwo. This should be put with like a smirk emoji, as he needs to treat her. He looks the other way as she removes it, and he treats her while joking that he can treat injuries but can't cook. He gives her a hoodie and his track pants to put on as he carries her back to the apartment as her leg is sprained. At school, we see Amain is wearing shorts to PT as he had given his track pants to Mahiru. She smiles at him and he smiles back. The popular guy is a guy called Prince, he thinks he can pull anyone. Later that night, Mahiru comes to give Amain his dinner when he says he wishes he could eat it while it was still fresh. That's when she thinks that Amain just wants to get in her apartment. But she realizes he doesn't intend that and tells him that if he would cover half the cost, she would come cook over at his place to which they both agree. As for her safety, she tells that she would crush his goods to the point that it would never work if he tries something smart. They both share half the ingredient cost while Amain pays her a little extra for all the labor she does. They pretty much are living together by this point as they both share the workload at the apartment. Amain thinks he has found his wife as he appreciates how tasty the food is and asks her whether if it is fine with Mahiru to keep on cooking for someone she has no feelings for. She tells him the same thing she told earlier and asks whether she should not cook to which Amain immediately says please cook. The exam results are released and we find Amain being in the top 30. His friend's girlfriend comes and Amain expresses how he cringes over their public display of affection. 
As he gets home, he finds that Mahiru is grading her scores, and she tells him that pretty much everything is right, and she will have a perfect score. She also tells that he's not too bad himself, as he has a respectable number of marks to which he says that it's the perks of being alone in an apartment. She is about to leave when she drops her school ID, and Amain notices that her birthday is soon. Amain remembers that it's Mahara's birthday in a few days, and that is trying to think of something to give her. He asks her what she would like without mentioning that he would buy her a gift to which she says a sharpening stone, which results in a fairly petrified Amain. He asks his best friend's girlfriend as to what a good idea would be while concealing the identity of who he was buying the gift for. He finally decides on getting a hand cream and a teddy bear and gives it to her. Mahiru is surprised by the fact that he knew it was her birthday when he tells her that she had actually seen it on the ID she had dropped the day before. She loves the gifts and tells that she never has told anyone her birthday as he doesn't like it and tells that this was the first teddy bear she has received and promises to cherish it. He resists the urge to pat her head as he sees how cute she is. The next day, Amain is greeted by the surprise appearance of his mother at the doorstep. He hides Mahiru in his room and lets his mother in. He's not very happy about this sudden visit, and is kind of mad. She tells him that if she hadn't suddenly come without no prior notice, she couldn't have known if he was living healthy and just fine. She opens the room to his bedroom with Amain's resistance, and finds that Mahiru has fallen asleep in his room. Amain's mom thinks it's his girlfriend and tells him that she supports him for whatever his decision is. He tells her that he does like her, but as a friend, which is the biggest lie ever as it's pretty clear Amain is interested in her way more than a friend. Amain's mom's all pumped when Mahiru wakes up as she questions him with all the questions which confuses her. They all sit down to try to make sense of what was actually happening, but Amain's mom is pretty ignorant and goes on explaining how Amain is quite a gentleman, although he's quite an awkward, and she will gradually understand his value. After Amain's mom leaves, Mahiru tells her that she's a really good person, although she's quite talkative. She also tells how she's happy by the fact that she called her Mahiru-chan as it made her feel special. Amain calls her Mahiru and Mahiru calls her Amain. This makes them both feel something. She tells him that he should be careful not to say that when they are in public as people might get the wrong idea. Amain gives Mahiru a key to his apartment and tells her that she can have it as he trusts her. The day after, exam results are out, as always Mahiru's first place and to celebrate this Amain brings a cake. They take the cake and Amain finds Mahiru eating the cake quite cute. That's when Mahiru makes Amain eat a part of the cake as she feeds him. A very shy Amain eats it, and does the same back, asking her what she felt and she says that she felt very shy. The next day we find Amain trying his best to cook as he brings home some groceries and tries to make a pinny excuse of an omelette, ultimately failing and having to eat the one made by Maharu. She tells him that she wouldn't have anything to do if he learned cooking. Amain quickly tells her that he doesn't want her stopping the cooking as he loves it. She reassures that she doesn't have any plan to stop cooking for him. Itsuki, the best friend, and his girlfriend Chitos, whose names are finally revealed, ask Amain if they can have a Christmas party at her place, although hesitant at first, he says it would be fine as long as it's done before dinner. Amain tells Mahiru about his plans on Christmas, and is surprised that she has no plans and asks her whether she doesn't feel lonely. She tells him that she's used to being alone, and then he asks whether she would like to spend Christmas with him, to which she says she would love to play video games with him. The Christmas party is going strong as Itsuki and his girlfriend have come over to Amain's place. They see that it's snowing and look outside to find Mahiru on the balcony next door. They are all surprised as it's revealed she lives next door to Amain. Mahiru apologizes as she is discovered by Itsuki and Chitosuo put two and two together and realize that Mahiru, or as the angel they call her, was in fact the one taking care of Amain and spoiling him rotten with all her homemade dinners and whatnot. Amain tells that they have no romantic interest towards each other like Itsuki and his Gef, and that he would appreciate it if they didn't go around telling people that Mahiru was making dinners for Amain as that would cause a huge misunderstanding. Chitos tells that she won't tell anyone and goes on to say, no one would believe it even if she did as Mahiru was way above Amain's league. After some simping from Chitos over Mahiru, Chitos and Itsuki introduce themselves and officially becomes friends with Mahiru. After they leave, Amain apologizes to her as it did not go as expected. Mahiru goes over to her place and brings back a beef stew which they have for dinner when Mahiru points out that Amain is always smiling while he eats to which he says that her cooking is the reason for that. She says that some happiness comes cheap, to which he says that she isn't cheap and that it's in fact a treasure for him. While cleaning the dishes, Amain asks Mahiru from who she learned all these cooking techniques. She tells him that it was from someone who took care of her, and that person's food tasted like pure joy to her. 
That's when Amain says that it already tastes like pure joy to him which makes Mahiru really happy. They plan to have lunch and play video games the next day. Mahiru is really bad at gaming, prompting Amain to help her out as he draws closer to her. They are super close when Mahiru suddenly turns and looks at Amain which creates a little tension to which Amain apologizes. They go back to the gaming as Mahiru starts adapting while also being really cute as she leans to the two sides while she plays. She leans a little too much and falls on Amain's lap, and this ends in Mahiru having a bit of secondhand embarrassment. Amain explains that he was laughing as it was cute, and not that he was making a mockery of her. She wins one of the games she was playing, and Amain gives her a gift, which reveals a key case. He explains that he lent her his key. Flash forward, we have a romantic scene where Mahiru moves Amain's bangs to the side, revealing he's got a light skinned stare. I mean, really bright eyes, my bad. Amain does the same for Mahiru, as they both have a little moment. Mahiru cuts it short saying that she has a Christmas gift for him as well, which turns out to be a scarf. He suddenly goes on saying how cute Mahiru's smile is and how he likes it when an embarrassed Mahiru closes his face with a scarf and leaves to the balcony. Amain follows her to the balcony and covers her up with a little blanket saying she might catch a cold. Mahiru starts being like a mom again which gets them both laughing. The next morning we find Mahiru trying to hide the fact she has a fever. Amain doing an absolute he's him move carries her and asks whether he would like to go to her bed or his bed as she was being stubborn and insisted on working with a fever. She tells him to not go to his apartment so Amain plops her down on his bed and takes care of her as she did some time back. He holds onto her hand till she falls asleep and wakes up the next day on the couch to find that she's still not fully recovered. He treats her yet again and as night closes and Amain is about to go to sleep when he sits down next to Mahiru and talks for a bit till she feels sleepy. Mahiru tells him that no one's ever looked after her like this and that she's always been alone. Amain tells her that he's here now and is about to leave when he says that he will hold on to her if she doesn't sleep to which she agrees right away. A surprised Amain goes on to hold her hand and as she falls asleep it's clear. Amain is falling for Mahiru. The next day they wake up on New Year's Eve they text back a few people some wishes and that's when Mahiru falls asleep on Amain's shoulder. He remembers that she had tired herself out quite a lot during the day and that's what had led her to be a lot of energy. Amain considers the options he has which are either startling her awake or putting her in her apartment which both were not such good ideas, leading him to putting her to sleep on his bed. He wakes up the next day and finds that she's still sleeping, he ruffles her cheeks and she wakes up all shy and embarrassed and asks why he likes touching cheeks so much as he had done it twice before. He tells her that she should have made him stop and that he's a guy and could have used her to his advantage, but Mahiru reassures that he's not that type of person. Later that day, Amain's parents arrive, they both thank Mahiru for looking after their son and proceeds to tease Amain with Mahiru, who does it unintentionally. Shioko, Amain's mom realizes that they haven't gone to their first shrine yet and tells that she has a kimono just for Mahiru. They all get ready and both of them blush as they both find themselves pretty and handsome. They both hold hands while they visit the shrine and have some tea, which they both share after a little bit of hesitation, more from shyness of the fact that it becomes an indirect kiss. They get back to the apartment, and we find Amain making a move as he pats Mahiru on the head, which leaves her all fluttered up. He stops it for a bit, which makes Mahiru make a puppy face, making Amain ask her if he should have kept going, smirk face emoji. She calls him a backa and walks to her apartment as she thought she was teasing her. The next day, Amain's parents leave inviting both him and Mahiru over for summer vacation. At school, rumors have spread like wildfire about Mahiru having a boyfriend, but no one knows it's Amain. Over dinner, they talk about this, and Amana tells her that he could never imagine someone like him dating someone like Mahiru as he thinks of himself lowly. Mahiru, if it wasn't obvious, already starts telling him why he's way more than enough for her leaving her to be shy all night covering her face in a pillow. At this point, it's clear both of them like each other. The next day, we find Chitos coming to Amain and asking what kind of chocolates she should get for Itsuki for Valentine's Day. He tells her that he's a genuine guy so he should just ask Mahiru. Shito says that genuine guys make moves on the girl when they are alone together which startles Mahiru a bit. He tells her that their relationship isn't like that but in his mind he accepts that he gets urges when he's with Mahiru, but he doesn't want to make her cry or hate him. Shito tells Mahiru about the chocolate idea and tells her that she's going to give chocolate to both her and Amain. She tells her that she would give the best ones to Mahiru and the edible ones to Amain, who doesn't find it very amusing. It's Valentine's Day and the popular guy, Prince gets all the chocolate from the girls in the class while the other guys just sulk. 
Itsuki reassures Amane that he's gonna get chocolates from Chi, Chitos, and he soon realizes that he would have rather not as it tastes really bad. Mahiru gets him a Pali cleanser, basically some hot chocolate, which helps Amane. He asks her why she made hot chocolate all of a sudden and asks her if it was because it was Valentine's Day. This makes her feel shy and she rushes off back into her apartment. That's when Amane finds that Mahiru had made some not-so-sweet chocolates for him as he had told Chitos earlier. The next day, Amane is thanked by the prince as he had lent him a bag the other day to take all the chocolate he had received. Hitsuki starts a convo, and it ends up with him talking about how he has to convince his father to let him marry Chitos and how Amane would have to too someday. He tells her that it's not like that with him and Mahiru. Back at the apartment, Amane wants to get something for Mahiru to repay her for her kindness, when she tells him he has already done enough for her, and that he treasures everything that he gives to her regardless of what it is. She asks him when his birthday is, and he replies, saying it's on November 8th, which had already passed. But they were friends even back then. Amena tells her that he didn't tell it was his birthday, as he thought she might think he was just looking for attention. She promises to celebrate it this year, followed by a quick tease from Amane. In the new school term, we find Mahiru and Amane are in the same class. They had earlier talked about this, and now it had become apparent. Mahiru was excited for the class changes not because she just wanted to hang out with Chitos, it was so that Amane would be in the same class as her. He's surprised to find his childhood bully, Yuta, in the same class as him as he goes blank for a few seconds until he talks normally. Back at the apartment, we find Amane is still moody about the incident from school and because she wants to comfort him, Mahiru has allowed Amane to sleep on her lap, which is usually something a Bedef and a Jeff does. Amane gets confused by this but still goes on with it and falls asleep on her lap. A man wakes up and finds Mahiru being all pushy as she says that he can lean on her anytime as she had done on him, and that she's always there for him while squeezing his cheeks. The next day, Amain decides to bring some gifts for Mahiru as he plays some games in the arcade and brings them over and gives it to her. She asks what he would like in return, to which he doesn't properly respond, which makes Mahiru mad. To stop Mahiru from being mad, he tells her that he would like a pudding, so she goes out and gets the stuff necessary and makes a pudding which Amain turns out to love, this is followed by Amane complimenting Mahiru, which makes her blush up and close herself out of shyness. At school Katawaki, the prince wants to get lunch with Itsuki and Amane, to which they agree, but Amane notices that Mahiru was pouting the whole time. At home, she explains that she's quite jealous that she can't hang out with him at school, and she's a girl and Amane explains that it would shock everyone if the angel started talking to him out of the blue. This leads to Amane, Itsuki, Choitos, and Mahiru ending up in a group project where they have to cook. Mahiru teases Amane that he can't cook, and the rest of them tease him too. The cooking group work has started. Mahiru is almost burned by his classmates fooling around, which prompts Amane to act up and give him a word while holding onto Mahiru, which earns him some jealous stares. Back at the apartment, Mahiru is sad over the fact she can't be herself around Amane at school, and when she hears him say that she's a friend, it gets her mad, obviously showing signs that she has fallen for him as well. It's Golden Week, and they have a week off from school. Mahiru uses the do anything ticket and asks Amane to go shopping with her on one day of the week, to which he says that she doesn't need to use the ticket. She tells him that she's gonna use it and he would have to do anything she asks of him on that day. The two of them decide to go to a cat cafe and visit a mall and do some shopping together. It's morning and Shitobis has arrived at the apartment to learn some cooking from Mahiru. Amane falls asleep while the two of them cook and wakes up to Mahiru who's really close to him. She tells him that she had pranked him while sleeping, which was squishing his cheeks and ruffling his hair. I don't know how it's a prank, but okay. She tells him that the next day they are going out and asks him what kind of style would a main like her to rock in. He tells her that he would prefer prime and proper outfit and opens the door next day to a Mahiru, who has her hair tied up and is dressed in a nice outfit. They go to a cat cafe where they have some tea, which leaves a milk moustache on Mahiru's face. This prompts a main to take a thought and tease her as she gives him the side eye. The pet a few cats, and an Amane tells her that a particular cat in the cafe called Silk finds comfort around him, just as Mahira does. She tells him she's not a cat, although he treats her like one with all the padding on the head and all. They go on in the store, and Mahira leaves to try on a dress when Amane is approached by some girls who ask him out, followed by Mahiru taking hold of him and dragging him away. She goes an arcade game and wins a cat stuffed toy which looks like Silk and gives it to Amane, who she tells that she was trying so hard just cause she wanted to get it for him. Amane is about to pat her head when Katawaki suddenly arrives surprised by Amane and Mahiru hanging out. Katawaki promises them that he will keep their secret and gets to know about it a little more by a boy's chat they have later onwards. 
A man comes home to find Mahiru hiding something when he finds out it's some childhood pictures of him. He tries to get her phone, putting them in a very questionable position, where they both stare into each other's eyes. After a few moments, they brush it off. A man goes shopping for a gift for her situationship as it's white day, and he dresses up nice the next day. This makes it hard for Mahiru to focus. He gives her the gift he had bought, revealing it to be a bracelet. He asks her whether she doesn't like that kind of stuff, and she tells it's pretty cute. She finds that there's something else in the gift box, which was a do-anything ticket for a main. She says that she wants to use it right away and asks a main to put the bracelet on her hands. The next day, a main and Itsuki have a boys chat as they talk about how the gift giving went. Itsuki tells that a main has pretty much fallen for her at this point and that it's obvious, to which he denies, but it's quite clear. He makes it back to his apartment. Maheru is a bit low after she finds that a main has had fries with Itsuki right before dinner, but is happy when he says that he would still have dinner. All he could think was that she was like a young wife. The next day, you find Itsuki having had a fight with his dad and asking a main to let him stay over. He tells that spring break starts soon, so he would be just fine with it as long as Mahiru is fine with it. Itsuki arrives at his apartment and is greeted by Mahiru, who tells a main to treat their guest properly. Itsuki is about to say something while they have dinner, when he says he will tell it later. Later at night, as they are both going to sleep, Itsuki tells a man that he's way too nice to Mahiru to not be interested in her. He tells her that unlike most people, she understands a main for who he is, and that makes him happy. Morning dawns, and we find Chitos who comes over to the Fujimiya apartment as she finds out Itsuki is there too. Mahiru makes some egg dish, which everyone finds quite delicious, and she tells that it's all thanks to the person who taught her how to cook. Chitos tells that she could never be like Mahiru as she's so uptight, which comes off offensive. She tells her that she's a completely different person at school and when she's at home and that she prefers Mahiru when she's being cute. The days go by where Mario gets some time with Chitos where she dresses up and poses with the teddy bear that a man had given her in his teddy. After three days of staying over at a man's place, Itsuki leaves to go over to Chitos's place. A main and Mahiru finally has some alone time together where they start to talk about Mr. Teddy. Mahiru spills the fact she takes care of the bear like a little girl, which makes her shy and asks a main to tell something embarrassing about him as well. She says that if he doesn't, he would ask Itsuki, and then he asks when he got his number. She explains that they had exchanged number while Chitos was over at their place. Suddenly, she gets a text, and she gets an instant mood change as she says it's nothing, clearly it being something. The next day, it's revealed that it was her mother who had texted. She had come over and was blaming Mahiru when a main overhears everything. Mahiru is about to go inside the apartment when a man approaches her and tells her to come with him as he knows she's pretty sad by this point. Although visitating at first, she obliges and follows. She tells him about her past, how she was a mistake by her parents, and that her parents never married out of love, but it was for their family's interests. She explains that they never treated her like their child, and it was her housekeeper who took care of her. The parents just managed the financial side of stuff. She tells him that the reason she was sitting on the swing all alone in the rain was cause her mother had told her she was an unwanted child, which shocked her. Mahiru had tried to be the perfect child, but they still always ignored her. Amain realizes how messed up this was and just pulls her in for a hug. He tells her that he understands why she's so scared about others, seeing her imperfections and tells her to cry it out. She feels better after cuddling with Amain a bit and Amain tells her that he likes her without realizing it, to which she blushes and then tells him to hold onto her and never let go. She's immediately shy after cuddling for a while, and a main tells her that she should really worry as she's not alone. He explains that him, his parents, Itsuki, and Chitos all love her for who she is and not what she shows out to the public. They decide to go out for a walk in a cherry blossom park. Mahiru suddenly hugs a main, telling him to never stop keeping his eyes on her and to not let them wander off. He thinks to himself that it would be weird if he didn't fall for her at this point. She tells him that she never liked cherry blossoms as they always reminded her how lonely she was and how she never had anyone to hold her hands. Amain takes the chance and holds her hand as they admire the view. It's Mother's Day and Mahiru asks Amain if he was gonna go visit her and asks why he is living so far from his parents. He explains that back when he was in middle school, he was bullied by some people who didn't like him for who he was and this led him to have trust issues and ultimately led him to leave his neighborhood and start over at this place. Mahiru tells that she would have punched them if she knew, and she tells him that he can always depend on her. Emotionally, too. She pulls him in for a hug and they cuddle again, and she tells Amain that he does it when she's low, and there's no excuse for when he's low, and he should confide in her. 
Amane tries to tell her that he's a guy and it's different, this leaves her to walk off mad, and to make up for it Amane's surprise hugs her from the behind. The next day at school, rumor has it Mahiru was out with a boy at the mall. When questioned who he was, she tells him it was friend, but it was a date too. She says that he's the most dearest person to her and tells it again at home. Amane has decided that he's gonna work out for good, this leaves Mahiru to ask him for a favor, where she almost spills out that she wants to sleep with him. She doesn't say it but tells him that he should pat her more and tells him that she likes it when he touches him. You've heard that, right? Amane also thought the same and woke up with an accident in his pants. The next day, Amane avoids Mahiru as he's guilty that he saw her that way in his dreams and ends up spilling the tea to Mahiru who uses this chance to tease him. It's hard to know if she's joking or not. They both accept that this was the first time both of them had gotten this close to someone of the opposite sex. Amane gets shy and asks Mahiru to not look at him which prompts them to talk with their backs facing each other. It's exam season and the gang come over to study as Mahiru is teaching everyone. Mahiru tells Amane that if he makes it to the top 10, she would do anything he asks her to. Anything. Smirk emoji they have a study session and have some fun and leave, leaving Mahiru and Amane alone where Mahiru touches Amane's lips and tells him that she loves spoiling him and that he should remain helpless like he is right now. Amane realizes he wouldn't be able to function without Mahiru at this point. The results are out, Amane's the sixth and Mahiru's the first as always. Since Amane had made it to the top 10, he gets his wish granted, which was to sleep in Mahiru's lap again. Mahiru is dressed in leggings, which kind of turns on Amane as he's hesitant about going on with it. He falls asleep on her lap while she strokes his hair. He wakes up to a Mahiru who has fallen asleep, without any idea what to do he does, what is the most practical. He lifts her up and takes her to her apartment and plops her on the bed. It seems that she has a framed photo of Amane in her room which Amane somehow doesn't notice. When Mahiru is on the she wakes up and asks Amane to sleep by her side, Amane being the decent guy he is doesn't oblige and swaps the place for a teddy bear. The next day we find an embarrassed Mahiru who has no idea she had asked him to sleep with her. He tells her that although they are close friends, it would be wrong for them to sleep together Tao which Mahiru says he has no problem sleeping on her lap so why worry? They argue and Mahiru leaves back to her apartment. The next day we find Mahiru is all ready for summer as she has no leggings on with her skirt. This leaves Amane looking sideways as he finds her extremely cute. Mahiru teases him asking whether it looks bad on her, and they get a little too close as Mahiru says she wanted to show her bare legs to Amane to which he says to put stockings on. Quite a turn this story taking my Ashuri that. She wears the summer outfit to school and pulls all the guys and this leaves some girls to make some rude comments about her which Amane later questions her about. He asks whether she is okay, and she says that she can't be universally liked that there would always be some haters. They tease each other and compliment each other for a bit as Amane tells Mahiru, he prefers the cute side of Mahiru which gets her blushing. Amane tells her that she sometimes gets physical without his consent, and she tells him that it's not intentional but sometimes intentional which makes no sense. Mahiru tells him that Amane is cute to her, and that no matter what he thinks he will always be cute to her. After she compliments him he gets real close over face and closes her mouth with his hand and Mahiru makes a huge move when she takes his hand off and gives him a kiss on the cheek. She runs away after doing this like way as I are you running. During recess the boys have a chat as Amane talks about how he needs to have a bit more confidence to ask her out and make things official, they wonder if they have been fighting as he and Mahiru were somewhat distancing themselves. Back at the apartment, Mahiru tells Amane that she had kissed him on the cheek as a way of getting back at him for shutting her mouth. As for school, Chitos and Itsuki have been divided to two teams in a game and Amane asks Mahiru what game she has signed up for. She tells him she signed up for the relay race and the scavenger race, meanwhile Amane had signed up for the bag toss. The sports day begins during the scavenger hunt, they chose each other to be the object they have to find and finish together despite being in two different teams. To the surprise of the whole school, it shows that Amane was supposed to find someone beautiful and Mahiru was supposed to find someone special. The boys become furious, so Amane criticizes them for idolizing Mahiru as an angel while to him she's just Mahiru and he loves her for the way she is. Mahiru also joins and backs up Amane as she tells the boys what needs to be said as she talks for Amane. She goes on to compliment Amane and tells the boys how looks aren't always important and it's more the personality that's important. After this, the two of them go have lunch together to the surprise of everyone at school. Amane promises to himself that he will confess his feelings for her when he gets home. The two of them are back alone at home. Mahiru apologizes for bringing unwanted attention to Amane, but Amane tells her that he's completely fine with it. 
He tells her that he's sorry for acting like he didn't realize her feelings and that he's a coward. Mahara tells him that she did basically the same thing, so she's not one to speak. He confesses how he really feels about Mahiru and tells him that he didn't think that when they first met that she would become someone so important to him as he holds her in his arms. Amain tells her that he might not be in the level Mahiru is in yet, but he will do anything to get to that level and be the man for her. He tells her that she's the person he cares about most, and they go into a hug. 